Don't know if y'all heard the news, but Google announced Axion. So um, a little bit of a primer for our 40,000 listeners out there and watchers, viewers. Um, so, you know, uh, first party silicon creation, design, creation, manufacturing has become a trend in the cloud, if you will. It, it's for good reason, right? Because AWS, Azure, Google, Oracle, IBM, they all understand their cloud environments better than, you know, any CPU vendor could possibly understand them. They understand their thermal requirements or performance requirements or performance per watt requirements or performance per dollar requirements. They understand different services and kind of, you know, when you need to turn up frequency, turn down frequency, you need a bigger cache, L2 cache, L3 cache, so on and so forth. Um, and so they're able, they have a, a much better understanding of what their requirements are. And that has led to, that's what has led to this Russian arm, right? And this kind of big arm um, invasion of the cloud data center. AWS was first with Graviton. It's up in the mid 20s as far as uh, percent of deployments within AWS goes, which is huge. Yeah. Azure recently announced Cobalt, um, their homegrown, homespun ARM um, CPU. Ampere is out there with Merchant Silicon, and um, and Google, who you know has a long history in silicon development with TPUs, uh, recently announced just about a week ago announced Axion, their version of ARM. Um, it's going to be used for internal workloads, things like Spanner, which is a distributed database, which has very unique requirements. YouTube, everyone knows YouTube. Mm -hmm. Google, which has, you know, yet a different set of uh, computational requirements. They're going to use this thing everywhere they possibly can. Um, and they're also rolling it out into GCP for customers as well. So going to be a really interesting play. Uh, with Axion, I'm really curious to see uh, how wide and how broad this gets deployed across their GCP instances, uh, and you know what this is going to do in terms of their relationships. And I'm always curious about AMD and Intel and how this impacts these these folks, these players financially. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you think about AWS, you know, nearly 25% of it, of its environment has moved from AMD and or Intel to homegrown. That's a significant, when you're talking about millions of CPUs, that is a significant hit financially. Yeah. And when you take that hit financially, that means you can't invest the way you have continued, have, you've invested in the past, right? Um, you know, that's, a, that's money that you can't put into developing maybe an adjacent product line or going into uh, other, other projects and strategy or strategic uh, movements, right? So I'm kind of curious as to, you know, number one, does this continue from GCP, Oracle, or GCP, uh, AWS, and Azure to an Oracle and an IBM, and who does their own silicon anyway, and others? Um, or, you know, does a merchant silicon provider like Ampere or another competitor really start to take um, aim at, at, at kind of down market cloud providers? That's part one. And part two, you know, what is the long-term impact to an AMD, AMD and Intel? We know they've launched their high core car high core count parts to compete with ARM, right? You got Bergamo from AMD and Intel's gonna have Sierra Forest here in a couple of months, um, 144 and 288 uh, cores. What does this mean? And does ARM eventually create their own part that they sell as a uh, silicon merchant? Who knows? Um, but it's a fun, it's, it's fun, to, fun to pause it and fun to watch. And um, it's really cool to see this innovation. Who would have thought that, you know, companies would be building their own silicon in the year 2024? You know? It's crazy, right? I mean, is this, I mean, Matt, from your perspective, is this sort of me too? Because, you know, AWS has made a lot of noise with Graviton. You know, so you've got, you know, Azure with Cobalt now, Axion with, with Google. I mean, is this a me too? Or is this like, do they clearly want to, you know, create some some differentiation? And I get it. They each understand their individual yeah. architecture and environment and challenges, and they're they're bringing custom silicon to sort of go address this. But is yeah. this racing stripes? Here's or here's the thing. It's a it's a really good question. Here's here's the reality of of how the CSPs and any hyperscaler plays. Right? Think about Meta, you know, um, Salesforce, other kind of hyperscale organizations. Right? NTT. Um, these guys are driven by margin. 
right? So I deploy something. I deploy an Epic processor, a Xeon processor, or a Graviton processor, and it costs me, I pay, I'm making these numbers up, right? Yeah. $1,000 for that processor. Over the next five years that this thing is deployed, I'm going to make some amount of money back off that. Yeah. If I could deploy an alternative and make two extra points of margin, I'm going to do it. Yeah. This has nothing to do with, you know, there's a lot of talk out there about, you know, like a Azure built Cobalt because they wanted to, you know, they want to be in the silicon business or, you know, you know, Google, you know, they feel kind of left out. So they have to jump in. That is a, what you, you're, you're articulating is something yeah. a lot of people say. The yeah. reality is they're driven by money. The minute it makes sense financially for them to do it, they're going to do it. The minute it makes sense financially to not do it, they're not going to do it. When I was at AMD, we saw this, right? Cloud providers aren't fickle. They're not sentimental. Um, they don't play favorites. Their favorites are themselves and yeah. their bottom line. So they're going to go with whatever provides them. And when they plug it into their spreadsheet, whatever provides them the highest percent of margin, that's yeah. what they're going to go with. Um, okay. That yeah. makes sense. You know, and certainly using ARM gives them some flexibility, right? Because it's a high bar to do custom silicon, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so an arm helps sort of, you know, maybe, you know, kind of reduce the friction and, you know. Yeah, ARM has a program called CSS, um, Compute Subsystems. And essentially what it is, is you take their, their, their family of, of data center technologies called Neoverse. So it takes that Neoverse IP and it allows you to take it in a near ready state and then kind of turn the knobs for your specific requirements, right? So your time to development goes from three years down to six months, right? Yeah. I, I'm exaggerating a little bit on both ends of that, but it greatly reduces the time it takes for you to go from concept to actual deployment of silicon within your data yeah. center. That makes it very, very easy for these folks to, to turn product on pretty quickly. And if you wanted to take it in just kind of a vanilla state yeah. and, and deploy it and not, not you know, turn any knobs, you could do that as well. So that's why ARM is uh, appealing to them. Something Google did, which I thought was really interesting, is they didn't specify like the, the, the specifications of Axion. They didn't tell you how many cores. We know it runs on V2 of, of, Neo, of uh, Neoverse, but that's it. Don't know the cores, don't know the memory, don't know the cache sizes. So they're, they're offering this out truly as a utility to customers, right? Um, which I think is really interesting because to me it's like, this is where silicon becomes a commodity. Yeah. Um, you don't, as a as an IT shop, you don't need to know how many cores I have in Axion. You don't need to know how much. You need to know whether you can get you know two, four, eight, you know thirty two vCPUs and how much how much RAM you can get to go along with that. That's all you care about. Yeah. So your instance sizes. That's all you care about. You don't care about what sits in the background. But anyway, oh. I could talk forever about this. Sorry. Yes, you can. And Paul's bored because he's like, this is like so elementary and basic. <laughs> so, so, smarter things to think about. Baby stuff. <laughs> right.